Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another fabulous edition of the 411 with West Texas Rehab. I've got Christine Douglas with me here today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Oh, I'm excited. So, okay, first of all, let's just start with, we've got a lot to talk about, folks. Um, so let's just start with what you do there at West Texas Rehab. Um, I'm a speech language pathologist in the adult department at West Texas Rehab Center. Um, I work with adults who have a variety of disorders, um, things re relating to post-stroke rehab, degenerative disorders like Parkinson's disease, voice problems, swallowing problems, um, communication deficits, of course, so a wide variety um, of therapy that we do in the adult department with all ages. I was about to say, you do it all. I do it all, <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. So, okay, May is a special month for y'all, so let's, let's go into that. Tell us why. May is Better Speech and Hearing Month, and so during that time we try to increase um, public awareness of what speech pathologists and audiologists can do for people. Yeah. So let's let's list some of those amazing things that y'all okay. do because that's okay. a lot. <laughs> well, at West Texas Rehab Center, we treat we yes. have speech pathologists who treat patients from birth on up, yeah. and so that may be a child who is having difficulty saying their sounds or is not talking the way they should, or all the way up through a stroke patient who maybe has lost their ability to swallow yeah. or can't communicate with their families anymore. And of course, in our audiology department, they work on the hearing aspect of that. So, and they work with all ages. So again, what do y'all not do? <laughs> that might be easier. That's um, amazing. As so, for speech services, yeah. we pretty much cover everything that that would be needed on um, for all ages. That is fantastic. So let's go into now some of the the programs because y'all had you had a special. I don't know what 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 should we call it. Special grant? We received a grant, okay. a continuation of a yeah. grant. Um, in April, we found out that we were receiving a continuation of our grant from the Parkinson Voice Project. Wow. In, and they're an organization, a not-for-profit in Richardson, Texas. We received our first grant from them in 2018. Mm. And that grant provides us with training, education, support, materials, uh, if I get a graduate student, they can get the training. Wow. Um, and uh, Parkinson Voice Project is a not-for-profit. When I first heard about them, they only treat patients who have Parkinson's. And they only treat patients with speech and voice problems related okay. to Parkinson's. But when I found out about them, it was interesting to me because they're also, they treat patients completely on a pay-it-forward system. Oh. So it, it kind of meshed with what West Texas Rehab Center does because we want to provide services to everyone regardless of their ability to pay. And Parkinson Voice Project does the same thing. Wow. That is amazing. So y'all just got, you know, ex you got another one. You got mm -hmm. extended. We got ex we got another grant. That is amazing. So they, do you, what's, what's your future plans for that? <laughs> well, through the grant program, we started uh, their programs. The Speak Out program is individual one-to-one, one-on-one mm -hmm. one -on -one therapy mm -hmm. where we start with an evaluation and we record the patient, we find out what their problems are, is there anything underlying that we need to take care of. But also we look at can this program help them. So in their very first evaluation session we try the techniques and we get to show them the difference it can make. Wow, that's amazing. So they see that kind of instant results there. For the most part, wow. yes. And and that's recorded. Mm. A lot of times patients with Parkinson's don't realize they're having speech and language or speech and voice problems. Okay. They say, my family needs to get their hearing checked or they're not listening to me. And by recording that, and my voice is in the recording too, so they can hear okay. that they're not loud enough or their speech isn't clear enough. About 90% of patients with Parkinson's disease are at risk for speech and, and voice problems. It's a high number. And so by showing them you can achieve this, they, they already are going, wow, yes, I want to I wanna do something about this problem. And so we start with that. And the Speak Out program, again, is one-on-one. -on -one. It's individual therapy. Parkinson Voice Project provides each patient with a workbook at no cost to the patient. They do send a pay it forward envelope with it um, because the workbooks aren't free. Right. Um, 
But if the patients can't afford to do that, they still get their workbook. And that workbook is going to be their lifelong daily practice. I do ask that the patients commit to daily practice twice a day when, on the days they're not in therapy because without targeted daily practice, they won't maintain their voice and speech. Once they graduate from the um, Speak Out program, they go into the Loud Crowd program, which is a lot of fun. Uh -huh. It's our maintenance group. That sounds like fun. <laughs> and it is. So we run through their basic exercises yeah. every time, and then I get to plan some fun activities. But it's also a group where it's all patients who have been through the Speak Out program, and they support each other. Wow. They encourage each other. They hold each other accountable. They mm. may say, you're not speaking with intent. The purpose of this program is p patients with Parkinson's muscles still work. Yeah. But the amp because of the decreased dopamine in their brain, the amplitude is not there. So their strength is usually preserved, but they're not using it to the full extent. Right. And so we encourage them to speak with intent, to speak with purpose. Um, if I've got someone who is a coach, I might say, use your coach voice, yeah. or somebody who is a businessman, use your, your CEO voice, yeah. um, use your drill sergeant voice. I try to tailor it um, to what their, what their interests are, what their background is, and we see changes with that. Our Loud Crowd program, unfortunately, has been on hold. Um, mm -hmm. We were on hold because of COVID and not being able to get groups together. Yeah. And we were within a week of starting back up when our building flooded last oh, February. No. <laughs> and so we're still in construction. Yeah. Um, hopefully in the next few months, we'll get that program back up. I've maintained a list of everybody who was in the groups before, but also who has completed the Speak Out program since yeah. then. So I'll be making phone calls and we'll, we'll get the group started, but um, we're still kind of under construction over there. So we're on hold. Yeah. Well, but. that, I mean, those programs sound absolutely amazing. And so what I'm getting is, you know, there is support, but each of the treatments is tailored specifically mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. person. Yes. Um, we, we follow the um, Parkinson Voice Project Speak Out program, mm -hmm. but the, the beauty of that program compared to some of the other Parkinson Voice and yeah. Speech programs that, that I'm trained in and I use um, is that this program allows me flexibility. Mm -hmm. If I see that somebody needs more than maybe the 12 sessions that we would normally do or less, I can do that. If I see that I need to do something a little different, I can do that. Yeah. And so it is tailored. The loud crowd is a group activity, so it's a little bit different. But the other thing with that is I'm with those patients once a week. So after they've graduated from Speak Out, I'm still monitoring their voice. If I need to bring them in earlier yeah. for a refresher, um, or a, a reevaluation, I can I can say you know things we need to measure again. Yeah. Um, they are scheduled. Um, once we get back up and running, they're scheduled for regular reevals mm -hmm. so that we can monitor and maintain. The whole purpose is to help patients with Parkinson's disease maintain their ability to communicate yeah. throughout the course of their disease. That is, yeah, that is fantastic because I'm sure, you know, people come in and they kind of feel isolated. They kind of feel alone or, you know, mm -hmm. there's some, just some, you know, a lot of emotions going on. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of walk them through that? That's a tough question. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's a tough situation. Uh, it to, it yeah. is because a lot of times they may not be, it depends on the stage in their disease right. they're at. Um, for some of them it's early stage and that's when we like to get the patients okay. in is before they're really having huge problems mm -hmm. with communication. Um, the earlier we can start a program like this, the better we can maintain. Yeah. But if they're having problems, we encourage their families to tell them, speak with intent, speak yeah. with purpose, um, use your intentional voice. The families can have cues. I've even worked with a patient where they were very social, still getting together with family and friends a lot, yeah. but they needed cues and so we came up with a little signal that his wife could give him if his speech and voice, where oh. she didn't have to interrupt him, she just gave him a little hand signal. Yeah. And he knew that he wasn't speaking loud enough in group situations. Wow. Um, so we try to do that. We encourage families to be involved mm -hmm. in supporting the patient because sometimes patients with Parkinson's do have memory problems. Mm. They may not have the drive um, or ability to self-start. Okay. So they need some encouragement. So we get the families involved with that. 
Parkinson Voice Project also has online daily practice. Oh, so wow. if, if a patient's having difficulty um, remembering to do their exercises, we can say every weekday at 10 o'clock, tune in here and, mm-hmm. and I've even set up their cell phones so that <laughs> all they have to do is push a button to get that link if they wow. want me to. Um, but they can practice that way for one of their, their sessions and those sessions vary just a little bit from the workbook so they're fun. Yeah. Um, but if we need to, we work with our social worker at West Texas Rehab Center and, and help them get into some counseling mm. because sometimes when you're dealing with a disease like Parkinson's, that's important too. Our loud crowd group is also set up once we get going again, but we scheduled it for just before the Parkinson's Power Hour group, okay. which is the physical therapy maintenance group. Okay. So they meet twice a week and they do exercises because any type exercise for all part of the body is is important with Parkinson's yeah. so once they've completed a physical therapy or occupational therapy program at West Texas Street Center they can go into the power hour group and we scheduled the speech and voice group to be just before that other maintenance group so it's the same patients for the most part yeah. they go from one maintenance group to the other so they're exercising their speech and communication and then they go into exercise their bodies that is amazing that is that is so fantastic yeah it's I mean it really speaks to kind of the the family and feel there at mm-hmm. rehab mm-hmm. it's kind of a family and and this group support really yeah yeah. And, and when I have time, I can pop into the yeah. Power Hour group and make sure everybody's using their intentional, yeah. speaking with intent, yeah. using their voice with intent. Um, so a lot of times they just see me walk down the hall and I'll see them stand up a little taller and they start using their voice stronger. Go. They know, they that, see you coming. They know, yeah. yeah. Um, that's the other thing is I'm, I'm outside where they're uh-huh. working out. So even just going to get another patient for something, yeah. I'm... They're seeing my face. It's a reminder. Yeah, that is fantastic. So, okay, you mentioned the family and family involvement and how important that is. So if a family member is watching this right now and they're like, okay, you know, I'm not, it sounds kind of familiar, but I'm not sure, you know, maybe their family member hasn't been diagnosed. You know, what are, what are some of those steps that they can take? Um, If they haven't been diagnosed with Parkinson's, but they're having symptoms, Uh they need to contact their primary care. Uh They need to see a neurologist. Um, if they've been diagnosed and, and they're ready to start a voice or speech program, if they're noticing changes, or even if they're not, we can monitor that. They need a referral from their physician. Yeah. Um, and once we get that referral, I do an evaluation, and we determine what's appropriate for that patient. It's that simple. It's that simple. <laughs> if they're... If they have questions about the Speak Out and the Loud Crowd programs, yeah. they're welcome to contact me, Christina Douglas, at West Texas Rehab Center. Um, if they live, if somebody's seeing this and they're outside of the San Angelo West Texas Rehab Center area, yeah. they can go online to ParkinsonVoiceProject.org. There is a tab on that website where you can find a provider in your area. If they're not comfortable with computers or that kind of thing, if they want to contact me, I'll find, I'll see if I can find someone in their area. But for patients in the San Angelo area, and we treat patients from all over, yeah. um, we have this program here. Yeah. It's right in their own backyard. It's right. It's it's <laughs> readily available for them. That is fantastic. Well, we have covered a lot. Um, do you have any other you know final thoughts or messages that you want to share? Because all this information is fantastic. Um, the big thing is that patients with Parkinson's disease can maintain their function, whether mm. it's physical or speech or voice or swallowing, with daily targeted exercise. Yeah. And they may need help doing that, and we're here for them. We're here to help the family support them with that. But it can improve their quality of life so much, and that's what we want to do at West Texas Rehab Center is, is make help patients have the best quality of life that they can have regardless yeah. of what they're being treated for. Fantastic. She's she's wonderful, folks. She's wonderful. Give her a call. Go see her uh, if you have any questions. Thank you so much for being on the show today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.